to. Sorry. guys what's up welcome back to my channel i hope you're all safe and well so for those of you that are new here my name's emily and i'm a medical student and i'm actually due to start my final year which is fifth year tomorrow so i thought what better to do than just sit down and talk about my journey getting into medical school and my journey through medical school so far talking about what it's been like so for any of you that are interested in going to medical school hopefully this will give you a bit of a first look into the application process and what it's actually like day to day being a medical student. I think this is just going to be more of a sit down chit chat type of video about my experiences so far. I will sit down and do a proper how to get into medical school and go through all the steps of the application process in a proper sit down more formal video. So stay tuned for that but this will be just a bit more of a chill chit chat about my process through medical school so far. So I'm just going to run through in chronological order my journey all the way from when I was 16 and decided I wanted to be a doctor all the way up into now when I'm about to go into my final year. Please give this video a big thumbs up if you enjoyed it and of course hit that subscribe button down below if you want to see more from me i post a mixture of fashion makeup lifestyle standard youtube stuff along with some medical content as well so i thought i'd just sit down and talk about where i am with medical school at the moment as i said i'm just about to start my final year so i'm going into final year tomorrow obviously with the current coronavirus situation i am not currently on placement if we weren't in the middle of a pandemic i would have been usually from third year we go into clinical placement where we spend all our time on hos in hospitals on hospital wards seeing patients actively involved in their care. With the pandemic, we are not doing that at the moment. So I am starting my final year all online and I will have lots of patients to catch up on when we're allowed to go back to placement, which should be in August time. I thought the best place to start would be way back when I was 16, when I decided I wanted to be a doctor. Just to give you a bit of background, both my parents are doctors and at school I was very good at science and my teachers had always said, have you ever thought about doing vet medicine? Have you ever thought about being a doctor? Going down that healthcare route, but I was really, really actively against it. I just thought I wouldn't like it. And I think that comes from hearing both my parents talking about medicine so much, being both doctors, they would talk about it at the dinner table. And I think hearing that almost like maybe me not want to be a doctor seeing how stressed they would sometimes be about it I think that put me off but then there was a turning point I distinctly remember when I decided yes this is what I want to do I do want to be a doctor there was absolutely no encouragement from my parents they hadn't pushed me in any career direction I came to it myself it was when I was 16 I was quite unwell for a period of time and it was in that period I saw how the doctors and members of the healthcare team had changed my life really not by treating me but how they were with me and their manner with me. And I think that was the point when I realized that this is what I want to do. I want to be able to make another person feel how I feel like those doctors that looked after me while well, that was probably just maybe a fraction of their career I still remember them and I will always remember them and that's when I was like I want to make someone feel like I've just felt like I'm forever grateful for what you've done to me the way you've spoken to me the way you've looked after me and I think that was going forward when I decided I want to be a doctor so obviously I'm studying in the UK so all of this will be from a UK perspective so when I realized that I wanted to be a doctor the first thing I did was just did loads of work experience partly because we have to do it for applying to medical school here in the UK, but also because I wanted to make sure that I definitely did want to do that career. And that is one of my biggest tips I would say to anyone who is thinking about being a doctor, do your work experience and do as much as you possibly can because it is a long course and it is a stressful course and you need to be sure that you want to be a doctor at the end of it to make all that worth it. So do your work experience. I volunteered at local hospice and care home and I did that for six months. So I did that over the summer holiday when I went back to school as well. And I also shadowed a final year medical student which was a program that the university local to where I'm from were running that you could anyone who was interested in being a medical student could shadow a final year medical student so I did that as well and I think that was the most beneficial work experience I did because I actually saw what it was like to be a medical student which it's fair enough knowing what it's like to be a doctor from your work experience but knowing what it's actually like to be a medical student is invaluable because I knew what I was getting myself into I knew what it was going to be like going to medical school and over the summer before I started year 13 my final year of school I also had a bit of a go at writing my personal statement so those of you that are in that situation now, this is your summer holiday, just start thinking about your personal statement, start getting ideas from your work experience. You know, your application is not due until October, but it's a good time to start thinking about it. So for A-level, I took Spanish, chemistry, biology, and English literature. You do need for medical school, chemistry and biology. The other two subjects are up to you to take, but most people who I know, most of my friends at medical school took like physics and maths. 
and that tends to be if you look at the majority of medical students what they'll do is they'll focus down that sciencey math route but I never enjoyed maths I hated maths I was rubbish at it and I wasn't mad keen on chemistry but I knew I wanted to be a doctor so that's why I took it and biology I absolutely loved so I did two other subjects which I really enjoyed which were English literature and Spanish yeah I think actually that was a really great thing to do it was not to just follow everyone else and do oh I should do maths and physics because it might be better being a doctor because actually I've learned I learned really great written communication skills which are important for coursework it was important for my dissertation so yeah I think I actually probably learned more skills that are relevant to medicine and important for being a doctor so after this we fast forward to my final year of secondary school which here in the UK is year 13 so at this point I had to choose what medical school I wanted to go to one day me and my mum sat my mum was brilliant with the whole application process of getting into medical school I literally could not have done it without her we sat down and we had a little book and I'll see if I can link it down below that was really great and it had information about every medical school in the UK and we just went through them and looked at what requirements they had and read a little bit about them and reflected on experience of going around open days and ticked them or crossed them whether we thought I had a good chance of getting in and whether it would be somewhere I wanted to go until we were left with where we thought I would be applying to and at this point I also had to sit the UK CAT which is an entrance exam which all prospective medical students in the UK have to sit it is just another way of screening medical students because it is so 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 competitive to get into medical school so they need really a screening process so this exam they use and it's an aptitude test so there's sort of math questions english literature type questions it's just like weird shape questions like we have to figure out what the shape is and i just remember it went horrendously for me um i got just above the average mark but yeah it didn't it didn't go well at all i didn't get an amazing mark it wasn't like who i'm definitely gonna get in and i felt just so discouraged after doing it i thought i'm never going to get into medical school with this it's not a competitive score it's just above the average like with 12 places to everyone getting into medical school when i applied i was just like i'm never gonna get in but actually when i sat down and i looked at the different medical schools i just didn't didn't apply to ones that weighted heavily on the UK cat that really really looked at it. I applied to medical schools that also looked at your personal statement, what GCSEs you got that looked at other things about you rather than just your UK cat. So I decided I was going to apply for medicine at University of Nottingham, University of Sheffield, University of Belfast and University of Exeter and the reason I chose those four is because A I liked them, B I thought I had a good chance of getting in and C I had family near or near-ish in all of those places. If you didn't know I'm originally from Northern Ireland so that's why I chose Belfast which is in Northern Ireland if you didn't know. So our application is due in October so I applied in October and after this it's just such a long wait. So most other universities the application for your course isn't due until I think after Christmas time like January and you get your offers really really quickly after that like my sister applied for university this year my younger sister and she got offers like within days within weeks I think actually after her application she got an offer the next day. I put in my application then and I just had to wait to hear if I got an interview. So eventually, and I think I heard around Christmas time or just after Christmas that I had not got an interview from Sheffield, so I'd been completely rejected from there, but I had an interview at Nottingham, Queen's Belfast and Exeter, which is really, really good, like to have three, not to like, I'm tooting my trumpet, but that is good. Like, don't be disheartened even if you only have one, that's good because you only need one offer, that's all you need. And the interviews I did were MMI, which means mock mini interview. So like you go through eight or nine different stations and there's a different examiner and a different person asking you different questions or different stations um but again that's something for a separate video but yeah I had my interviews my interview at Nottingham was great like I came out of that and I just remember thinking that went really really well everyone was lovely all the people I spoke to before sat in the waiting room all the people I thought I could be friends with you you were the kind of people that I would want to go to medical school with and at my other interviews I just didn't feel that they went well I didn't feel the examiners were nice and sometimes they do do that like to try and put you off but I didn't feel it went well I didn't feel the examiners were nice and I didn't really feel like I made friends in the waiting room like that might have just been the day I went but that affirmed my choice of what medical school I was going to at that point because I was like like I think you just get a vibe at the interview I got a vibe in Nottingham I was like I like you I just got a vibe and that's when it kind of clicked for me that was where I wanted to go I got offers at all three so I was really really fortunate I had three offers I had three medical schools to choose from and before I before I talk about results day because that was a process in itself i'll just talk about like what it was like going through school like the whole application process of getting into medical school is just so 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 nerve-wracking yeah it's, it's really nerve-wracking the whole thing i was like nervous all that year i probably didn't really enjoy my last year of school because i was so nervous about getting in thank you harry's bought me snacks
yeah so results day i still have nightmares about results day a level results day to this day i am permanently traumatized by it in fact to show you how nervous i was i'd got up at four o'clock because i literally just could not sleep i had no sleep because i was so nervous to find out if i got in you know found out i got in and then that evening me and a few of my friends were gonna go on a night out like a sort of a level results night out i remember waking up the next morning thinking i don't remember anything i'm asleep on my sofa i don't remember going out what's happened and then going to find my mum and being like I don't feel hungover like what's happened and I'd fallen asleep at home at pre drinks and not gone out and everyone had gone out without me because I was so tired from not having slept so yeah so getting it like finding out I got into first school was probably like the most happy I've been I don't regret going to middle school at all I like it was what I thought it would be but it's also not for as stressful as it is I would never change what course I'm doing anyone who goes to medical school anyone who's a doctor will know that medicine is a bit of a way of life it's really hard to explain and that's something I almost didn't anticipate before it's almost like just way of life this way of thinking that you get into like I said in one of my previous videos when one of the, someone asked me what one of my hobbies was I was like what well, kind of medicine is my hobby because I love it so much I love learning about it it's just so fascinating like so in Nottingham the first like two years of not clinical at all so it's just like we had a little bit of placement like going into gp surgeries and going to hospitals but it wasn't very much it was like max once a month and then when i got to third year at nottingham we do an integrated degrees but we do it within the five years so i spent half a year doing my dissertation and getting my my b med side degree do at nottingham and i did my dissertation on dementia and memory clinics and that was really interesting and that got me really into the academic side of medicine which i have kept up since then i've worked on several publications so i have kept up that and that's something that I didn't expect to enjoy going to medical school. I'm, I really like sort of public health. I've done research looking into alcohol content in different TV programs, um, but actually doing research and publishing scientific papers is something that I have really enjoyed. And I learned that from doing my dissertation and then have subsequently carried that on and in my free time have gone on to work on various other publications. We have a not to toot my own trumpet, just to sort of give you a bit of an overview about me as a human, as a medical student, as a future doctor. After we'd done my dissertation, which was half the year um, and I'd got that degree, I then moved on to clinical placement, which has been since February of third year all the way up to now where I'm just about to start final year and that's been in hospitals nine till five pretty much every single day and that point in time I think when you start placement is when the pressure is really amped up the way of learning can be quite tough like I have learned to develop quite a thick skin I think you know if you're like in front of a patient and the doctor's like okay you've spoken to this patient what do you think's wrong with them why do you think they've come to hospital today and you get it wrong like it's quite embarrassing so you do develop quite a thick skin and so yeah there's been some like really amazing experiences and placement you do definitely like see some stuff that like not many people get to say they do a baby and I've delivered several at the on the flip side you know it is it is really stressful like coming home from a nine to five day and having to study having these huge exams you know and there's a lot of pressure there as well because eventually one day you're going to be doing that on your own you're going to be the person making the decisions that could potentially save someone's life so I think one of the hardest things and um, all medical schools are like this regardless of what medical school you go to is you're constantly shipped and chopped and changed between the hospitals you're in so like for each placement you rotate so I might have four weeks doing ear nose and throat and then after that I'll have four weeks GP and then after that I'll have eight weeks of obstetrics and gynecology and you rotate between different hospitals and those can be far like sometimes I'm um, five ten minutes walk down the road sometimes I'm an hour and a half two hours in the car sometimes you have to stay overnight this horrible hospital accommodation for weeks on end because you're so far away and you're constantly mixed with different people which can be a really good thing because you get to make lots of friends and work with lots of new people but at the same time it can be hard being far away from your friends and there's lots of long hours night shifts I've had to do we don't have to do loads but we have had to do some I think the reality of it is it's a really hard course it it is hard while I say it has been stressful and there has been a lot of tears I wouldn't change it I know this has been a really long rambly waffly video but I hope I've gone through in chronological order my experience and process and journey through medical school and I hope if you are thinking about going to medical school this giving you some idea of what it's like what the process is like as I said I will do a separate video on how to get into medical school and going through all the process thank you guys so so much for your support so far thank you to every single one of you who has clicked that subscribe button and who always watches my videos it means the world to me it really really does when I started this I never actually thought that I was going to continue making videos it was just sort of a one-off funny thing I did but actually Actually, I'm really, really enjoying it. If you're not already subscribed, it would mean the world if you could click that red button down below and of course give this video a big thumbs up. As this video goes up, I'm really close to 500 subscribers, so I would love for you to help me get there. I know it's not a lot compared to some of the huge YouTubers out there, but it really means a lot to me. Be sure to follow my Instagram because I'm quite active on there and if there's any questions you have, I definitely want to do like a medical school Q&A on there at some point and Q&A about other lifestyle stuff. So definitely be sure to follow me on there. But yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. Stay safe in this crazy, crazy time that we're in at the moment. Sending love to you and your family. Thank you so much for watching. Bye. Stay safe.